Welcome to Talk About Tatooine. I'm Andrew. I'm Nathan. And we are twin brothers here to bring you what's new in nerddom and give colorful commentary on our favorite subjects. Welcome to our cantina. Grab a drink and settle in as we set course for realities beyond our own. Welcome everyone to the live recording of episode 64. Those of us who have been sticking in with us so far have just listened to the first nine minutes of this podcast as a <laughs> sound check. Super happy you guys are all here. Today is again episode 64. Our recording date is March 17th, which is also St. Patrick's Day. So make sure you guys got your green on. We are both rock and green, so we are basically good to go. And this episode is going to be released tomorrow on all our other platforms as well. So it'll be out on March 18th. Today, we're going to be discussing Star Wars The Bad Batch, the remaining episodes that are out, episodes four, five, six, seven. Yeah, we four, usually five, only six, do three seven. episodes. We're doing so, four episodes. Yeah, so you're getting a little bit of extra here. One today. for each live member of The Bad Batch. Pretty much. <laughs> Absolutely. So with that, we are going to hop basically right into it. Unless, Andrew, you have an opening question you want to hit us with. No, I do not. Fantastic. So we're going to get right into it here today. So we'll hit you guys with the overall format, because again, I'm not going to be able to go back and fix this and post in time. So I do appreciate you guys all being here. What we usually do when we're reviewing these episodes is we give a rating one out of 10. We go through our favorite me- favorite moments from each episode. The theories from what we think is going to happen next a little bit of lore and maybe some episode lowlights as well and then we usually finish off the episode with some nerddom news because we are a podcast that enjoys many different fandoms so we'd like to keep you guys updated on what's going on in the general nerd universe andrew anything to start before we get it right into it anything to add we are technically Twitch affiliates now, so there's cool stuff down yeah. in your chat feature. There's the little chat icon or uh, channel points icon. We call ours midi Um, because that's the greatest thing to ever happen to the Star Wars canon is in episode one when the midi chlorians were added. Shut up. I can see your face. <laughs> no, I, I don't actually think uh, midi chlorians are cool. I think they're super lame, but here we are. So you can spend those channel points and you can interrupt us at at any time to play funny clips. So that's fun. As a side note, I've put it and I've pinned it in the chat as well. If you guys have questions, throw them in the chat and we will try to answer them as quickly as we possibly can live on this stream. Thank you very much. They will show up right next to my face. We are going to start off with a rating one out of 10. Andrew, go ahead and hit me with hit me with your ratings. One out of 10, please. Are we going to go through four, five, six, and seven all at the same time? Or do we want to do one episode at a time? Let's do... We could do them all at the same time. That's fine. That's how we have them written. <laughs> so for episodes four, five, six, and seven, respectively, I gave a five, six, seven, and eight. Episode four, I really didn't like. Didn't really like. You know, on a test, this would be an F. Uh, I wasn't a huge fan of what I would almost consider a filler episode. It would be totally a filler episode, if not for like the last five minutes of the episode where Omega actually reunites with the batch. And it's so sweet. That really was my only favorite part of this episode. It's like, oh, it's so sweet. She's finally back. And then they're like, oh, by the way, crosshairs here. And they're like, oh, well, that sweet moment is over. You spoiled it. Absolutely. I like how we gave similar ratings, but like ours both cascaded up because we basically had the same impressions. So I, you gave a five, six, seven, eight for episodes four, five, six, seven, respectively. Totally not confusing, confusing, right? (laughs) (laughs) And I said a six, seven, eight, eight. So I gave everything basically one tick higher minus episode seven. We actually both rated that an eight. So very excellent. Again, I thought pacing was a little bit slow. I did like that they were able to get out of their element a little bit and actually be able to see some action between Omega and Crosshair. Uh, But I think this was a good ramp up into episode six and seven, where six and seven was really a two parter. Now, keep in mind, if this is holding to the pattern that we've seen in other in other seasons, we have four episodes left roughly. So Something as big is probably going to happen in the next couple episodes, but we'll talk about that in the next section as well. Overall, not a bad arc between the two of us. So it gets positively better, and I think it is best enjoyed if watched consecutively. Agreed. That's that's what I did. In both my first and second viewings of all these episodes, I sat down and watched all four of them as a chunk all at the same time. 
Love it. I think one of the things that really annoyed me about episode four, so just as a brief recap, uh, also spoilers to chat. Uh, we are going to be spoiling the crap out of these episodes. They've been out for a while. In this episode, somehow Omega seems to have enough street smarts to <laughs> to wrangle a ton of credits out of this poor Trandoshan in a bar. And then as soon as someone's like, uh, like pay me money on the street so I can like give you information about these things. Like she just doesn't haggle and it's like, she completely loses all of her street sense and it totally bugs me. Or like I get the whole thing with like the Imperial officer and stuff like that, but like not everyone she encounters is an Imperial officer. She like tries to bribe an official, all these different things, but she just goes about it the wrong way. She's like, I'm trying to bribe you. And they're like, Okay, well, that'll be 30,000 credits, which I imagine is a ton of money. Yeah. I don't really it know sounds what like inflation it. is like in the Empire. <clears throat> Probably pretty bad, honestly. Uh, that's not what we're here for. So that that really took me out of it. I was like, oh, this is dumb. It's like, oh, their dog got taken because they weren't watching it. And as a person who is freaking crazy about their pets... I never let my dogs out of my sight unless I physically leave the house. Anytime our dog walks into another room, I'm like, what are you doing? Troublemaker. <laughs> and he slinks back in with a toy. He's like, I wasn't doing nothing, but anyway, I'm like, you guys, what this, this whole thing could have been avoided. <laughs> Indeed. So. I did like crosshairs idea. He's like, let's just shoot our way through. And I'm like, well, they probably would have gotten them killed, but it would have been quicker. In D and D terms, Crosshair is a murder hobo. Yes, and Omega is like, no, we should probably play things by the rules, and then fails all of her persuasion checks. Every single yeah. one of them. doesn't even get the option to haggle. She's like, ah, crap, I don't have enough points and charisma for this. She's like, what, fifteen thousand credits? And the person, like the official, she was trying to bribe, was like, actually, now that you mention it mention it that's per ticket and she's like oh that's crazy and it's like did she just roll a nat one what just happened yeah it's it's pretty bad like ooh, she's rolling with disadvantage yeah it it bugged the crap out of me and thankfully there was a a decent ish firefight towards the end and the imperial officer gets like sucked into a transport crate by this big tentacle monsters Tentacles are always a bonus. So uh, that is a Raftar. Similar ah, to yes. what we see in The Force Awakens. I think those also show up in the High Republic. There's like a bunch of them on Starlight Beacon and they all get loose because of course they get loose. Yeah. Why would you introduce them in the plot if they're not going to get out and kill people? Yeah. that. <laughs> can you imagine how dumb that would be? It'd be like, we have three Raftars in a cage. It's like. And. Like, oh, they stay there safe the whole time. Here's the thing. Honestly, at this point, they could put stuff in there like that. And they're just like messing with the fans because they're like, everyone's like, oh, they're going to get out. How are they going to out? And then just do nothing with them. They'd be like, oh, you subverted our expectations. It's like, come on, guys. You do things so similarly all the time. You really could take a chance and just not do that. But <laughs> I mean, it's like it's like a small homage. Like, y- you know what the care what the creature is. And that's it. So I was a fan. I liked that. That was actually oh, yeah. probably my favorite moment from episode four was the firefight slash animal release at the end. Yep. Uh, I loved that little bit of quick justice. So yeah, it was a lot of really fun. enjoyed it. Let's move on to let's talk about episode five. Um, this one's called the return. Here's the thing. There has not been an entire episode in this season dedicated to just filler. So there's not too much sawdust in the dog food. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's probably a gross way to say that, but, but episode five, the return pretty close to almost being a hundred percent fill, but it had some redeeming quality. We got to see why crosshair was imprisoned by the empire. And we see like, we see his motivations for a lot of things, you know, actual character development happening, not like 
the racing scene in season two where tech does a pod race or whatever the heck it's called. And it's like, well, we knew he was going to win because there was stakes on the race. So of course he was going to win in right. this. Yeah. In this one, it's a little bit more like, okay, we're finding out a little bit more about crosshair because he's not, he didn't like immediately succumb to brainwashing from the chip, but they like the empire even tried to make it happen. This is back in season one, which is why like half of his face looks like Swiss cheese or, or like Deadpool skin. That's really <laughs> probably more accurate. Uh, but then we also do see like, Hey, they go to this base so they can decode this data pad or whatever, and they find a bunch of useful information. So it, it, it is still advancing the plot. Whether as in season one and two, there are episodes that do not advance the plot. I definitely didn't cat. I felt like this was like a really good episode that I felt like it really did belong because it would have been out of place for them to continue to move forward with their campaign without having some tensions relieved between mm -hmm. Hunter and Crosshair. Oh, so I, I agree. actually. So I, I really thought this was an important episode and I thought this was a really good callback to the episode where Crosshair uh, turns on the Empire. I thought this was a really good episode. Yeah. That being said, again, a little bit of pacing. However, everyone likes worms. Uh, worms are so in right now. So everyone's a fan. Can I can I read my summary for this episode? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, tensions rise as our heroes navigate new dynamics on a dangerous mission. That's the actual disney plus description and then i added the team arrives at a hostile planet where outside of the safety of their base they are liable liable to be eaten by giant worms that are incredibly hostile to human life oh sorry um those are my notes for dune what am i thinking <laughs> in this episode the team arrives at a hostile planet where outside of the, the safety of their base they are liable to be eaten by giant worms that are incredibly hostile to human life. we love worms Again, they're so in right now. They're, worms are so in right now. Those worms are so hot. I oh my really gosh, those episode. worms. <laughs> Dude, I got to get me some of that. <laughs> I love that so much. Is it back to normal? It is, yeah. I have it all like he stroked out, so I'm like, I'm Hopefully hoping you don't uh, right double finger that. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Just mm, phrasing. So, okay. Uh, uh, so good summary on episode five. Uh, go ahead and read your summary for episode six, seven, and, and then we'll go through our favorite moments. Oh, okay. So episode six, I'll just tell you what, it really starts to heat up. The batch is reunited with an old ally. This is for episode six infiltration. After an assassin tries to take out Senator Chuchi and Senator Singh and ultimately Omega, the renegade clones led by Rex regroup with the bad batch for assistance. <laughs> this episode's awesome. I loved this episode. This is this is where it starts to get like real fun. And also, I think there was a moment where I was watching these episodes and I texted you. I'll try to uh, edit it down so it's not as profane as I originally <laughs> said. But I basically said something along the lines of, holy crap, this is a kid's show. I'm like, there's no way this is a kid's show. I'm like, this is wild stuff. And it's and it's softened because people aren't like getting their heads cut off or anything, right. aka episode two. But it's still pretty wild. It's it's intense. Yeah, and so the part where they capture the shadow trooper, which is I think their desig their official designation, and they're like, oh, we have to like remove his tooth first because his tooth is actually an electro which is what they call it which i'm like that that's cyanide that is our version of a cyanide capsule yeah it's a suicide capsule yeah <laughs> like wild like, stuff get to be taken alive but thankfully rex is a very smart combatant and is like all right it's time to start ripping teeth out just like do not mess mess with rex So in episode six, Star Wars or Disney, whoever's writing these episodes, they are teasing us so hard with Scorch and Delta Squad. Why? Why 
are they not showing the rest of Delta Squad? What happened? I want to see them. Like, so the Republic Commando program is not the same thing as the bad ones, where these were like rejects. The Republic Commandos all still had functioning inhibitor chips, and they all are now personal bodyguards for what's his face uh i can't remember his name i'm just so cheated <laughs> but they just keep teasing us with scorch like he's like the leader of the republic commando division i shouldn't even call them republic commandos they're they're imperial, imperial commandos commandos you're right the republic is dead <laughs> i just uh, it really irks me. I get like That's really fair. excited when I see Scorch, but I'm also like, when are we going to see something? I really hope they're they're foreshadowing the rest of the Scorch. What are your I other thoughts? So as well. What are your other thoughts on it? Um, well, without going through my other notes that I have already written, I don't have much else other than stuff that I'll talk through in our in our second points. So, gotcha. I'm like scrolling up and down, up and down, down. Uh, <laughs> one of my other notes is the infiltrator ship is fucking rad <laughs> dude it's a nice ship absolutely that is a nice triangle I like the triangle <laughs> very very fun also I was <laughs> I was feeling very silly when so <laughs> the bad batch reunites with all the all the rest of the of the renegade clones including crosshair and my notes i j- i wrote out Ako taco the rest of the clones aren't thrilled about crosshair being back with clone force 99 well They're especially basically... since crosshair traded shots with some of them already yeah. on ryloth he's like hey remember then you when you killed all my friends and he's like yes yeah, so about that my bad he was like yeah good soldiers follow order and they were like bro they don't like you. <laughs> and he's like, well, yeah, I figured that out eventually, but you know, he's for a while. pretty okay with people not liking him though. He's yeah. like, I know what I did. I'm not like an idiot about it. He's, he's making good moves though. Yeah. He, he's certainly winning the trust of the other renegade clones. I swear if crosshair, like escaping from prison was actually like a, a double cross. To like find the other clone cells and bad ba- and the bad batch, I will scream because it's I'm pretty convinced. I'm like I'm t- yeah. It seemed legitimate. It seemed like he legit got out of jail, killed a bunch of Imperials while he was in that spaceport, and they're like, "This is fine. We're playing the long game. Go find your other brothers, and so we can kill." Them. That would be horrible. To be fair, back way back when in season one, we did predict that Crosshair would potentially off some of his brothers. Oh, that was a long time ago, but we did predict that. So awful. Hate it. Let's move into just your quick summary notes of episode seven, and then we'll go into favorite moments from each episode. Sure thing. Episode seven, uh, it's called Extraction. The word I wrote down is execration so glad spellcheck didn't catch that uh, a quick summary as enemies close in the bad batch must evacuate strong so the the empire sends in another shadow trooper as like forward operating trooper the scout and recon the facility because they know they apparently have an undetectable tracker inside of all of their operatives so when the enemy clones pick up one of the shadow troopers another it is a piece of cake for another one to find them right away. So he acts as like force recon goes in, um, is able to infiltrate their compound incredibly. easy. <laughs> yeah. He's just running around. He just like walks in the back door and he's like, it was I mean, he goes lot. into the control room at one point and no one notices. And I'm like, how did he get in? First of all, I'm like, how did Hunter not know? I thought Hunter was supposed to have like heightened senses and he's like, he does nothing. 
he, hey, that, <laughs> maybe that is a purposeful choice to show how good the shadow troopers are. I guess. I, I, I mean, I think that would be really smart choice, but like their dog, Matcher, he's not really a dog. He's like a cat hound or something. I don't really know. But he's a he's a very large hound ish creature. That one, you know, he starts barking. He's like, what the heck is that? And they're all like, hey, man, shut up. I was like, you guys should probably. He's literally he's a guard dog. That's you. I'm like, you guys are not taking your security seriously enough. And they paid for it. So and they paid and they did. They did pay for it. Uh, Let's see. (laughs) I'm not going to read all of those notes because (laughs) they are disgusting. Uh, <laughs> I, I made a uh, a hell diver uh, joke. I said the shadow trooper has stratagems because he has the little keypad on his forearm that he does stuff with, or on his bicep, or whatever. Uh, and I was like, "Oh, he's calling in the strats. He's throwing in an SOS beacon." Absolutely. Uh, and then my last note for my last appropriate note for this episode is just the animation. The the effort they, and the time that they're putting—it's been in really good. Episodes. Still, I have nothing but admiration for these animators. Fantastic! All right, uh, I'll kind of share some of my favorite moments from these as well. So, mm-hmm. in episode four, I definitely really liked that ending firefight, but really mostly just because I didn't really care for Omega kind of going through her subterfuge and gambling and stuff like that. Didn't care too much for it and also love a good animal release just because the Empire usually doesn't do good things with animals. So very excited. They all got released. Episode five. uh, Not necessarily. I didn't have a favorite moment of the episode, but I really enjoyed the setting. I really enjoyed the callback to the spot where Crosshair finally turns on the Emperor Mm -hmm. Empire. Excuse me. I thought that was super vindicating for him because none of the batch trusts him at this point. Omega does, but Omega has a heart of gold. So like yeah. that doesn't really She's too count. Trusting. That's not a good. She is. It's not a good bar to reach. That bar is too low. <laughs> Absolutely. And then we got the snowy cousin of the dune sandworm. So again, I was super excited about that in episode seven. Literally, I was just like, oh, finally, we have Imperial assassins. Great. This is awesome. Yay. So super excited about the uh, the appearance of the shadow trooper. Keep in mind everything Disney and Star Wars does is also a marketing tool. So there is a good chance we are probably going to see some sort of toy for the shadow trooper come out in some way, shape or form in the future, because that is what Star Wars has kind of been for a long time is a way to sell product. So keep that in mind. We might have some cool toys um, for all of our younger listeners. If we have any, probably not. We swear probably a little bit too much for that. Our demographic is, 30s aged late 20s early 30s aged men (laughs) so if you're a collector then (laughs) then you might get some cool shadow troopers in episode eight i actually thought this was a really fun episode i really enjoyed the pacing and tension between wolf and the shadow operative yeah really enjoyed seeing the commando again i was bummed when they called his name out because again they're teasing us with this and they were like hey helo so his name's helo like helicopter um, so I'm assuming that means he has some sort of like aerial background or something like they always, there's always a reason they get their name. And I thought that was really cool. But at the same time, I'm like, Hey, where's Delta squad? Where are they? And in episode eight, I was so convinced the shadow trooper was going to kill crosshair. He was drowning him in a raging river. I was like, again, this is a kid's show. Somebody's getting held down by their neck into a river and they're wild stuff it. and they're showing it like his face stops moving. So he like he swallowed a lot of water. I thought he was dead. I was like, I was so ready for it. I thought that would have been a really good turn for them because, again, Disney doesn't take risks like that. So I would have been really heartbroken, but excited, like just bar- he barely gets his chance, doesn't even get a chance to redeem himself. And boom, the shadow trooper takes him out. I think that would have been awesome. That would have been and- devastating. It would have been, it would have been, but it would have like, I think really put some fuel on the fire for the clones assaulting Tantus later, which is uh, actually what I think is going to happen next. Yeah, for sure. 
Um, one of Any the highlights notes, you want to add? Uh, so back in episode four, when they crash land the shuttle that they stole, this is actually something I pointed out in our last Bad Bad episode, was that in the very first episode, so season three, episode one, this ship crashes on Tantus, and the cockpit is like speared through with a with a tree branch. Like it is not pressure sealed anymore. And then by the time Crosshair and Omega leave the planet, the ship is space worthy again. Um barely, but it is it's able to go into hyperspace and I mean it eventually crashes on another planet. But they are able to get into hyperspace. And this actually brings me to something that happened in the High Republic, which is the great hyperspace disaster. And what happened was is they took a ship that was in hyperspace uh, and they didn't really know why it happened, but it was, it was terrorists. They basically hijacked an airplane and spaceship uh, and 9 11 it across uh, an entire sector. Um, basically, they, they blew up the ship in hyperspace thus, so that it acted like a massive shotgun across like, this whole system and it devastated like the entire head. Because these, like, uh, basically relativistic missiles are, are now crashing into ships and crashing into planets and killing millions and billions. Yeah, these are kinetic kill weapons, essentially. Yes, thank you. Kinetic kill weapons. And it <clears throat> is devastating. It's a similar type of thing that we see in uh, The Last Jedi, which I still stand by that. I think the way I understand hyperspace, I think that scene makes sense. Uh, there's some other loopholes with old Star Wars stuff that, well, we we would have to do our own episode on our theories of how hyperspace in Star Wars works. There's not a lot of agreement on it, and it's not used consistently throughout, which is a big problem. So it's sort of a moot point to argue how hyperspace works, because even Star Wars at Disney doesn't. But them flying the shuttle, which was falling apart in hyperspace, was super dangerous, and they could have killed me. Absolutely. Super dangerous to do that, but also kind of exciting. (laughs) Directed by George. (laughs) Let's get into what we think is going to happen next here, guys. So this is where we uh, theorize. So everyone put on your theory caps uh, and salute our Lord and creator, Matt Pat, uh, because we're going to go through uh, a couple of these. Andrew, you hit me with your first one and we'll bounce back and forth between these. Sure thing. Uh, In episode three and four, we confirmed that Omega has midi chlorians in her blood, meaning she could, in theory, use the force. This is actually something I predicted way back in season one. Uh, but honestly, not too much of a stretch. It's like, how, how do you in Star Wars? How do you make someone who's not a force user more interesting? You give them the force. Cool. <laughs> that is that shocking. No one. But in a, in season one, she shows like aptitude for a lot of things, and like her reflexes are pretty sh- sharp and attuned, especially for a child, not a child who has been genetically altered to be an adult. She's a child child. She's aging at a normal rate. Not like the other clones who were accelerated through, you know, their first 20 years. Uh, I don't actually know. They might have. So the clones, their entire life is accelerated. So they do expect a shorter lifespan. I think I don't I'm not clear if that slows down because the whole confirming Captain Rex at the Battle of Endor kind of like throws the timeline off quite a bit. So that specific example is why I don't think that clones continue to age really quickly after they leave the facility. I mean, but again, that is a sample of one. It's an anecdote. An anecdote. We're going to use the, uh, the FAFO method or also known as the scientific method. Ah, (laughs) (laughs) I was like, what the heck is a FAFO? And I was like, Oh, I got you. You know, (laughs) if you know, you know, you know, (laughs) nice. That was perfectly in sync on my side, by the way. So twins going to twin. Ooh. All right. <laughs> my first theory and our, our theories are hilariously similar because we're twins and that's just how these things work oh is they're going to storm Mount Tantus. I think this is oh kind of like my, my easy theory. I want that. 
Uh, I think they're going to storm Mount Tantis. There's too many surviving clones with skin in the game to not try to get these clones out. So they're going to make it happen. And I'm going to harken back to when we first reviewed this series, important clones are going to die. Rex is not going to die. And Wolf is going to turn because we already see that. Like at some point yes. that is that has to happen. That's not a theory that's like confirmed already. So that's why I'm not really including that. But I think the Bad Batch is going to die. I think Omega is going to survive, but I think the Bad Batch is toast. So gone. Because the only surviving clones we know of are Wolf, Rex, and Gregor. That's it. Everyone else we see, Cody, the other ARC troopers in the 501st, the Bad Batch, even Omega. We don't actually really know if Omega survives. Like, imagine how devastating that would be Omega, like they killed off, um, if they killed off the Bad Batch and then Omega was like trapped in a tank to basically feed these experiments. Like, how horrible that would be. Make for a good story, though. Make for a good story. But I, we've gone on record saying this before Disney does not have the balls to do that. No, they don't do it. All right, Andrew, hit me with your second one. So this is kind of in contrast to something that you think might happen. But there's no way tech is coming back. I think Crosshair is meant to fill the gap that tech left, but it's like trying to fit a round peg in a square hole. If the diameter matches the length of the square, it will still fit, but it ain't right. You know what I'm saying? This is even more visually apparent seeing Hunter and Wrecker in their like super battered armor. Like the paint has completely worn off in, in most places. They're, they're starting to see like shades of blue and yellow on their armor. Remember, it was originally black and red. So it looks all sorts of dingy. While Crosshair is in his old armor, and it looks basically the same as the day he left. It wasn't a box. He he fits in the slot, but it doesn't feel like a good. Interesting. Now, my contrasting theory to this is I think tech comes back. We have said so many times before, and this is, I'm just going off the rules. We have said, if you don't see a body, they're not dead. I know I said that, but he's totally dead. (laughs) How many times have we seen people get like caught by a flying creature in midair and they're like oh yay i've been saved by this creature could have happened i'm just saying he falls into the fog they don't see the body land he's alive it sounds like you're using my words against me and that hey, one of us is, has to be right and that's harassment and i would like to report to the cdc do it you can to the cdc <laughs> get out of here i don't know there was the first thing i could think of that doesn't even make sense anyway andrew hit me with your third theory i has the stupid Yes, but um, hit me with your third theory. This is really two theories. Uh, so this is one that we, I guess actually we agree on both of these parts. Did you just redeem something? Sorry, I'm on the stupid. <laughs> oh, I don't hear it. Did you hear it on your end? No, I have mine, mine muted, so maybe it went through, maybe it didn't. Maybe it didn't. We'll have to fix that. You totally derailed me. Um, talk about that. Yeah, I don't think it's working. Don't it's worry about working. it. Keep on moving. Son of a gun. <laughs> you said we, you were stupid. I was trying to play it. I it, The timing was there. Saw him on the city. Dude, people are going to have no idea what we're talking about. Don't worry about it. Give me your third theory. <laughs> Okay, so the Renegade clones, I think, are going to storm Mount Tantis. I think that is total. I think that's going to happen. Omega has even said, like, hey, there are other clones back there. We need to go save them. And so far in episode four, she's already able to convince, like, Crosshair to do things that he doesn't want to do. Like, save her and go get their dog. Where he's like, this is stupid. There's no tactical advantage to doing this. I should just leave you. And she's like, yeah, but it's the right thing. And he's like, ugh, (laughs) fine. (laughs) So I think an assault on Tantus is totally within. I think it could absolutely. 
my third theory is I, I, so I, it's very similar to yours. I think Delta squad is going to get revealed. I very selfishly want this to happen. I don't know if they'll get hunted by Delta squad. If they do, they're like, they're going to get toasted because there's no way. Oh my gosh. There's just no way they're going to survive that. <laughs> like, and imagine if they had bad batch kill Delta squad. First of all, I'd be very upset. Here's the thing. I know bad batch are the good guys, but if it came down to a, a 4v4 between Delta squad and bad batch, I am going to be rooting for Delta squad. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying, which actually does take us into kind of some lore that we want to share with this episode here, guys. So we've both been asking this entire series where the F is Delta squad. So if we've been saying Delta squad and you guys have no idea what we're saying, this is a group of four Republic commandos featured across a variety of galactic campaigns. Now the members of Delta squad are boss scorch who we've seen quite a bit already fixer and Sev who are vital tools in the grand army of the Republic's arsenal of assets. Now there is a ton of mirroring between these two squads, between the bad batch and the Delta squad. We have boss who's the leader and the generalist of the squad. Every squad needs a good leader. You've got Sev. He's the marksman with red, red and white armor. Sev is a sniper expert, usually employing a DC 17 M in its sniper configuration. Scorch our now Imperial commando is a demo expert. He likes to blow stuff up. Scorch is a crucial asset when eliminating heavy droid threats facing down Delta squad. Fixer is the tech expert. Having a support member on the team can often be the difference between success and failure on a mission. Now, if you just heard me go through those four members and you automatically assigned a member of the Bad Batch to each of those roles, that's fairly obvious. Boss and Hunter are both the leaders. Fixer and Tech are the support characters, the support members of the team, not support characters. Seven Crosshair, they're both marksmen. Scorch and Wrecker, they like to blow stuff up. Mm -hmm. If the entirety of Delta Squad is under Imperial control, the Bad Batch are going to have a challenging matchup during their fight against the Empire to take Tantus. I'm just realizing I was today years old that I realized that the Bad Batch is a one-to-one -one mirror to Delta Squad. Sort of, depending on how you include Echo and oh, technically yeah. Omega. Well, I take But yes, uh, Echo and Omega, Omega. are there because th th they are not original to when they showed up in the final season of the Clone Wars. Right. So, yes, they are all together. That really brings us into almost the end of this review here, guys. Uh, really, we'll just go through some of our lowlights, which I think really we mentioned already. I think episode Pretty four much. was our main low light. Just like, hey, this is kind of like that last little bit before the episode really like ramps up and the story gets going. Um, I'm also sure there's some of you who really enjoyed Omega getting to do her thing. However, you have to keep in mind she is still a child and still like naive. Yes. So expecting her to be super savvy all the time seems kind of tough. You're right. But overall, really good set of episodes. Super excited to see where the next couple take us. Yeah. How many did you say we have left? Probably four. Probably four. Yeah. I'm if let me tell you, if there's sawdust in my cereal, I'm gonna be upset. I would doubt that so 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 much. I don't think it's gonna happen. All right, guys, we are going to come up on our section where we talk about our nerddom news. We've officially finished the review of episodes four, five, six, and seven of the Bad Batch season three. So we're very excited to get into this part. So Andrew and I are basically just going to alternate between a couple of pieces of news and we're going to have some fun stuff here. So we got a really, really cool trailer from Nerdist this week about a Fallout show. Andrew, have you seen this? I've seen uh, snippets here and there. I am tentatively hopeful. Tentatively it looks hopeful. Amazing. So we are seeing a lot of video games being made into movies and shows. And this is kind of the new way to appeal to our base. Basically the same people who listen to this podcast. They haven't always been successful though. So right. I'm excited for this, but also like considering fallout as one of my favorite games, I would have a hard time not enjoying this. So I would be coming into this into a with a little bit of bias. 
You can find the three minute trailer on the Nerdist YouTube channel. It'll also be in the description of our video when we post this to YouTube and Spotify. The new show is coming to Amazon Prime Video on April 11th. Next up, we have one of probably is going to be my favorite film uh, this year. Dune 2 has received spectacular reviews. Everyone who I have personally talked to who has seen Dune 2 has absolutely loved it. It is sitting at an 8.9 on IMDb. That's amazing. That's really, really high. A 92% on Rotten Tomatoes. This one is a little surprising. A 79% on Metacritic. I'm like, really? That seems kind of low for something that is almost objectively. I hate using it because it's like anyone who disagrees with me is wrong. But it is pretty good. It is a masterpiece in my opinion. It's been very well received so far. I mean, oh, it's so good. I would not be shocked if next Oscar season, Dune 2 makes a lot of waves. Maybe even in contention for Best Picture. I'm just I hope so. Honest. That'd be awesome. Next, we have Helldivers 2 continues to roll out new weapons, enemies, and missions with lots of new orders. Keep in mind, we're going to be seeing a lot of new fun stuff. Like, so for example, about 15 minutes before this podcast aired today on Sunday, I saw a tweet that a new mech is being launched, the Emancipator mech. And we are also planning on potentially seeing what Joel gets up to. Joel's like the game master. He's like the one guy who like gets to like, fiddle with the universe it's pretty fun <laughs> and we're also probably they're they're heavily implying that the third faction the illuminate is going to enter the scene here soon as well so if you guys are diving first of all go democracy and second make sure you guys keep a lookout for all of those updates because lots of new stuff is continuing to land and again this is probably one of the best titles we've seen for 40 dollars. it's one of the best bangs for your buck that i've gotten it's so amazing. far I'm I'm thoroughly enjoying it. It's been great. I've loved it so much. And just a little bit of a plug for our episode 65. We're going to have an entire episode devoted to Helldivers, what's going on, why it's such a big hit, and some things coming in the future. But this studio has actually put like a lot of Easter eggs about like this is what's coming next. Like when the first Patriot Mac dropped in the game. They were just randomly giving access to the Patriot Mac to random people in the game and just saying, okay, let's just see how they how they like it. And that's how they were it was getting marketed that this Patriot Mac was coming to them. If some people were just like, I found one in the wild. And then eventually they were like, okay, uh, Arrowhead Studio says, okay, like your new orders, you have to go to a planet called Tian Quan and you have to liberate it so that we can produce these mechs. Which, on the flip side, is if that planet ever gets overrun by the automatons, we'll lose access to the map. Well, that's a conjecture. I don't know. But that would be, that would make the most sense. Agreed. Cool thing. It's, uh, I'll, I'll try to save some of my thoughts for our actual episode. I have so much to say about that. <laughs> Next up on the list, we're going to talk about the Star Wars Battlefront Collection launches with a pretty rocky start. So this is the original Battlefront 1 and Battlefront 2. Uh, Nathan has actually started streaming this already on our channel, and it was awesome. You streamed for like almost four hours today. It was great. We had a great time. Uh, but it's had some issues. Um, whew, how do I say this nicely? Uh, it's a massive download for two pretty old games it a lot of people are pretty upset with uh, the download size there's been some bugs here and there and some changes that some people have been upset with like i saw like one guy was really upset because they changed the map finding noise the do 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 it is different yeah it is different now it's barely different but it is noticeably different and people are like oh stupid that doesn't bother me at all. And I literally played almost five hours of this today. Yeah, I watched you play and I'm like, what? what sorry, what are we complaining about? Like, dude, I straight up thought I just remembered the sound wrong. <laughs> I was like, it's similar, but I was like, mm, 
Nah, they're like I must actually, just be losing my marbles. Yeah, they're just gaslighting you. They're like, actually, you're stupid and crazy. No, but I mean, I mean, you played it and it looks great. It looks great. It looks like it plays exactly the same. Just it's been it, really fun so far. I have not had any problems. So, I mean, they did change. All of it. They improved on everything. Absolutely. Keep in mind, guys, we also have 19 days as of today left in our giveaway. Now, we are going to be giving away a Star Wars Lego Super Star Destroyer and a $20 gift card. Now, keep in mind, this is not the Black Series Lego, uh, which is like what, like seven feet long or something like that? Something stupidly crazy? Yeah, it's massive. It's several hundred dollars. This giveaway is about 100 US dollars in value. So it's it's still something. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I would say it's a pretty good uh, it's a pretty good value. All you have to do is follow our Twitch, not sub. Follow the free button, not the money button, the free button. But we do appreciate the sub button as well. So you super go. excited about that. But we are announcing the winner on April 5th. So make sure you guys join before then to be entered to win. And this is just on Twitch right now. So keep that in we'll mind. Give us your prime. <laughs> oh look now we're rich i've solved all of our problems yeah all right andrew hit us with that last piece uh rebel moon part two is hitting netflix on april 19th i personally did not see rebel moon part one but it sounds interesting it's got the word rebel in it and the moon i'm like what 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 I'm like i do flashed. not have netflix so i have not watched the first one yet it looks amazing. I've heard people either really like it or really hate it. So I'm obviously super interested because I will have an opinion. On Absolutely. But also, like, this might get me crucified. A lot of people really raved about the creator, and I thought it was fun. I don't think I've seen the creator. It's on Hulu. Hmm. Yeah, I just thought it was fine. I'm like, okay. Neato. Burrito. Excellent. All right, guys, that does bring us to the end of our episode. We are very excited that all of you guys decided to watch in on our uh, live episode today. Every single one of you watching is amazing and probably a pretty cool individual. Make sure to leave your theories in the comments or like when we do more live stuff like this, we're actually hoping to do a little bit more of this style because this is super easy on me. Let me tell you what. And if you got stuff, questions, comments, concerns, conspiracy theories that you want to share about our fandoms, not in real life, we're not doing the real life conspiracy theory things. Like, let us know. We'd love to hear that stuff. Share pictures of your models. If you're a Warhammer fan, we'd love to see those. You can show us those on Twitter and Instagram. If you have a really formal email, you guys can always send us. I <laughs> May just shows up. <laughs> I didn't even get to Our trash talk. Hey, trash talker. Oh, I love it. We were just saying how beautiful you were. But if you guys have any questions that you want answered on air, make sure you guys do that. Make sure to subscribe and like so this video gets shared with others and it makes it into their feeds because the uh, <laughs> play Dark Souls, you cowards. He knows he's listened to us enough to know that we do not play Soulsborne games because we are bad at them. But we're super appreciative of all of you guys. We're going to raid this out coming up next. We're going to send this over. Let me see. Speaking of, ooh, we've got Planet Nico playing Helldivers 2. He's got about 10 viewers right now. I say we send it over to him. I will get that queued up. <laughs> all right so that is in there he is playing hell divers let's make a little bit of noise here guys thank you guys so much if you guys have uh prime subs as well drop them our way we'd super appreciate that are you going to talk about how the youngling in episode three couldn't could have been snoke see those are the conspiracy theories we love to talk about and we could bring that up in the next episode thank you guys so much for chatting with us we'll see you guys in the next one happy saint patrick's day y'all see ya